Welcome for another Café Rolliste. Tonight, not this afternoon, you might recognize a few voices you might be familiar with through our Rollist podcast. We are joined today by the whole gang of the Roleplay Heaven. Uh, Gary, could you introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, hi. I'm uh, Gary Harper. I'm uh, one of the directors of the Roleplay Haven. Kat, you're right in the middle of our screen uh, arrangement, so you're going to go second. Uh, hi, I'm Kat. I am the financial director of Roleplay Haven. And last but not least, uh, David? Hi, everybody. I'm Dave. Uh, I'm the community director of the Roleplay Haven. And I'm psyched to be here. Awesome. Uh, we, we're all here for great news, or maybe not so great news, but uh, still a bright future ahead. Um, so this show uh, has been sort of happening because of COVID, uh, the circumstances on my side. And tonight we've got the Roleplay Heaven to, to talk about what's going on at the Roleplay Heaven in those weird times, which are 2020. Um, Gary, what are the activities uh, happening right now uh, at the Roleplay Heaven? Well, um, obviously with uh, massive lockdown, the first wave has happened, we've had to um, close all the branches down for safety reasons for the members. Um, so we've gone completely online and we've moved all of the branches to um, Discord. So all of the branches are now operating from Discord. We've ramped up and upgraded the servers. Uh, the community have been behind it. They have upgraded because that's what you can do with Discord, is you can uh, inject into it. Uh, so we've moved everything onto the onto the Discord sites, uh, which has been has been very good and very successful with the members. Um, they've enjoyed the Discord. We've got all these fancy bots, dice rollers, and it's been a huge learning curve for us because it's not something we're typically geared to be is to be online fully um which has had strains on our website for sure uh and uh we've had to learn an awful lot because obviously people who know us would know we're typically venue people uh so we're, we're at the venues we're deep into the community with everybody around um very face to face um so yes it's a it's it's been a, a challenge with COVID. Uh, um, it's been a good thing and it has had a lot of negativity for us as a business as well because obviously we are a business as well uh, but this, probably a bit more on that but <laughs> you, you mentioned the face of to face uh, the venues that people used to you but actually my first question should have been uh, could you introduce the role play event and what what it does and uh, what it was doing when the, the before the pandemic was happening what what's What's all the work that you're doing? Because I'm aware of that, but contacting a few people recently, I realized that a lot of people are unaware of the amazing work that the roleplay heaven does. Um, Kat? <laughs> I probably hope you're going to go straight for that one. <laughs> um, blimey. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not great on the spot, I have to say. Uh, we obviously run several branches of roleplaying clubs throughout England, uh, mostly in London, uh, with our four branches here. But we also have branches down in two in Wales and also one in Plymouth, uh, as well as our running our community branches, um, bringing gaming to to everyone. We also uh, use this as an ability to raise money for charity. With each branch having their own individual uh, chosen branch charity that. Um, as they roll, they raise money, basically, um, which we've been doing now for quite a few years now, isn't it? It's 10 years, isn't it, Gary? 10 Today. years, yes. And, but you are an established charity as well. And uh, but not only you are fundraising often, but also you got this status. Uh, David, are you the specialist to talk about that aspect of uh, the role play heaven? You're muted. No, there was, don't know why that happened, sorry. I must have hit the button on my mic. Uh, yeah, I can talk about it if my mic will let me. Um, yeah, so we're, we're a non-profit organization um, that focuses on building communities um, around role play and then using those communities to uh, support local charities. 
Um, so for the last 10 years, that's what we've been doing. Really, really excited. We've been working with um, Mind, uh, Shelter from the Storm. We've been working with uh, children, ho children's hospitals, uh, homeless shelters, um, local, local hospitals, in fact. Uh, and we've been really passionately doing that work and our, our members are amazing the role play the role play community is always amazing because they always they always give so much um we do fundraising and different events and always the role players are always fantastic so we use that to be a force for good as well as being able to slay some dragons at the same time so um so yeah and so moving i guess moving online um our main primary concern is about keeping people together um, allowing people to like supporting people to be able to meet up with each other or, or meet up with each other like virtually and um, yeah that's been our, our, our primary concern through through the through the through the lockdown um, so it's been it's been it's definitely been a learning curve um, but thanks to our amazing volunteer teams uh, and um, our amazing director team here as well um, that learning that learning curve has been quick and we've been able to come online uh, yeah and it's uh, that's been the main part we're focused focused on, um, but obviously that's uh, that that that's definitely taking a toll on our meeting up face to face side. Yeah, the, sadly we are on the brink. I'm not even sure at this point if we started the second lockdown or if, if we are about to enter it. But uh, when the first lockdown happened, a lot of us still had plans for earlier well, the end of this year. Uh, that included some hope of dragon meat. I haven't heard anything about that, so I, I don't know what's happening since I haven't heard anything. I, I assume nothing, uh, or maybe something online. Uh, there was still hope. Uh, last year we organized, with your tremendous support, uh, the first D&D &D for mental health. We were f hoping for to do something else, RPG for mental health, this October. Uh, for obvious reason, it's not gonna happen because I don't have the energy of doing something online. Uh, so yeah, a, a lot of plans got changed, and uh, so there's no fundraising for Mind this October because you're engaging in another very important fundraising uh, this year. Yeah, one hundred, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. This year, we are for the very first time. We are going to be looking at fundraising for um, ourselves to keep uh, to keep our doors open effectively. Um, we we've always tried to plan the RP Haven, um, and Kat can tell you all about our, our our financial planning. Has always been we build a community. We make sure that community has enough money to run for three months um, without 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 if anything goes wrong. But obviously, we are over six months uh, into a lockdown with, well, into the pandemic with um, it looking unlikely to open our doors again. So for the first time, yeah, I think we're going to be focusing on, we're trying to focus on um, securing our future um, so that we can go back to fundraising. So your model for the club uh, has been up to this point at least, uh, not subscriptions, but people showing up at games and paying a, a, a modest fee to participate a game. Uh, uh, is that right, Gary? Yes. Um, so obviously we, we run um, annual memberships. So I guess that's a, an ongoing subscription, yearly subscription. But it relies on face-to-face, -face, uh, the money that people pay, uh, £2.50, um, is to play in the game. Uh, majority of that money goes into the venue. But we do get excess money, which is what we turn and convert into going to the charity. Uh, obviously, as Kate explained earlier, each branch designating where that money goes to. Uh, and then some venues uh, have so many people going to them uh, that you know they can produce an awful lot of money to, to, for charity. So yes, we we hundred percent rely on those money coming in, those two pound fifties per person coming in. And so, as you can imagine, we're in a, you know, we're coming up to possibly a second lockdown. Our reserves are not going to hold, uh, in all honesty. Um, our website is uh, is buckling um, because of other problems coming in. So, uh, we've not charged people for being on Discord. I only said, look, you're a member, join the games. So, there is no income coming in. We're completely solid. There's nothing happening. So um, yeah, it's, it's having a financial uh, toll on to us, just like 
90% of the businesses of this country or the world, everyone's in the same problem. And I think this time we're, we're saying, look, we've, we've helped, we've always helped the community. We've put everything into it, the members, this charity. We'd like to get help this time um, to keep us going um, so we can carry on on, what, uh, on, our, on our mission, which was to throw dice, have fun and raise money for charity which is in the core, that's what we've always done. Well, the, the role play has been very visible for at least people who attend conventions and, and these sort of things. And I think that it's a beloved organization to many people in the tabletop RPG industry. I know a lot of people who went through role play event and now are professionals in different industries. But I've heard you, you, you're putting together, or it should be ready tonight, actually, a, a video featuring people from uh, from our community? Yes, that's right. We've got, um, uh, we've reached out to everybody in the community, publishers, writers, artists, and said, we need your help, really need your help at this moment. Um, so we have an important message and we would like you to read that important message out to everybody, which will be displayed on our GoFundMe page. Um, asking for help um, because, we, you know, like we said, we're, we're here to support the community. We, we've support publishers, we've support everybody, artists. So hopefully they'll be reading that as well. They are because we've received uh, an awful lot of uh, videos coming in. So now we're splicing all that video up. Dave, you want to add something to that? Yeah, it's been an amazing, it's been amazing response. Um, there's been lots of, you know, heartfelt warmth and lots of expression of anything that we can do will will, will help you, and we're really we're really warmed by that. And as I said, the RP the RP Haven has always been really touched by the amazing response from the RP 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 community, role play community is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, no, we're really thankful for the help we've got. So we've got even before launching. Um, and we're really looking forward to launching it tonight. I'm not familiar with GoFundMe, so I'm slightly more familiar with Kickstarter because of the people I interviewed. Or do do they work? Or do you have uh, goals of some, some kind? Do you have different objectives with this GoFundMe? And depending on how much money you, you successfully re raise, you, you will have more projects you will put forward. Uh, what what's, what's the GoFundMe is going to actually pay for so the gofundme is obviously um, a lot different to what some people are familiar with things like kickstarters gofundme is uh for helping the community charity organizations or just people that are in need which is why we've used it it's the most appropriate tool for us uh there's no stretch goals not like kickstarter come on give us 10 grand we're going to give you this no we're not doing that you don't it's get a t-shirt or a plushie <laughs> of gary or dave no <laughs> Um, Can we no, have David it's... show up in his dragon costume for a, a children party if we keep social we distancing? We could do Dave showing up in his dragon costume looking sexy, but we'd have to actually have an extra separate stretch goal for having the costume cleaned, or you can have a smelly Dave dragon, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that, dra that dragon costume is locked away firmly until dragon meat comes out because it comes out with tongues and everything. I did not expect any other kind than a smelly dragon. <laughs> Well, they call him Dragon Dave now at Dragon Meat. So, <laughs> so no, we, we we're not stretch goals. It's simply a, a single target that we're going to be putting up online, and everybody needs to reach that target. So, everybody's been chipping in. Um, it's with GoFundMe's are a continuous as well. So they, you know, if you haven't got like one month to do this in. You can do it over a certain period. It can stay active as long as possible. Um, we do have a target. We need to try and do this within a month, So, which we're going to be putting on a gun fund. Me, that is our target. We need to raise that money and get in by this time of the month. Uh, because we've, we've got a, a lot to do in the future. We have um, a new website because we want to uh, have system in place where we can make a safe environment or a safer environment from COVID where there's uh, there's no payment of coins because we're doing coins 
I feel so out of date when we did the RPA and we're so ahead, but now I'm out of date. So we're trying to remove money. So you pay everything online. So when you turn to the um, to the venue, you've got your little ticket. There you go. Well, just show it. Don't touch it. Just show it. So it's all booked in, all remotely. Which reminds me, Dave's got my uh, contactless payment device, which I need to I recover. Do, I do. It's in my charity box. And that was from our. That was when we raised all that money for uh, mine, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't really have a use for it right now. So. <laughs> don't worry, I'll keep tapping it. Maybe the money will get. Maybe that money will go to you. I, I mean, the um, the all all the money that we raised at, the, at this in this GoFundMe basically will go to to relaunching the the, the branches branches because it's. Not only is it relaunching, not only is it relaunching the branches, it's relaunching the branches in a in a in a, in a, in a, a way that's COVID appropriate, uh, that we that is that is considerate and making making sure it's a safe safe gaming environment. So the safe payment, as Gary's just mentioned, we, that requires our, our new website so that we can do the do the safe payment. Um, we need to we need to explore kind of all the all the innovative ways to play role play in person without spreading COVID. So whether that be building a building a big barrier or having like you know speaker boxes or you know uh whether that be um i don't know fi finding venues where you can dip dip everybody in vats of alcohol gel i don't know but um when we do open the branches, could have get smart bubbles you know this big yeah. plexiglass domes you play under like a snow globe of some sort yeah <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's it's open in the venues, um, obviously, and that's going to be hard enough. The fact that we've got no had no income coming co coming in, but also opening the opening the venues the venues plus making sure that it's a safe place. Because at the end of the day, we don't we don't want we don't want to open the venues if it's not going to be a safe place. Our whole our our motto has always been fun, safe gaming, and that's that safe kind of always meant it, everybody feeling safe around the table and the stories that we tell. But now that safe has a real a real a real world physical part of that and that's what we're that's what that's what we're going to need to focus on so yeah all that money is going to go to, to making sure that we're safe when we reopen as well so is part of this funding also going to go to sort of uh, up your game online and uh, make it easier to for players to find each other as part of role play heaven and join online games and th there are types of safety also which are involved with data safety and this sort of thing so uh yeah, what, what's what's the future like in terms of uh, online gaming uh, at the Roleplay Heaven? Cat? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, Kat. I was waiting for Cat because she's been very quiet. Cat, <laughs> you you can't usually keeping us all right. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm actually kind of thinking. Hang on, I'm not the uh, tech wizard here. Hang on. Um, obviously, oh, no. online gaming is is not going to go away. Um, with COVID, I think people have moved online. Uh, with us, um, our, all our clubs just not seamlessly. There was a little bit, you know, we had to work together. We had to learn a new thing that we'd never done before. But everyone in our communities um, and all our branches did really wonderfully doing that, aided by Gary and Dave, who are more technically minded than me. Um, we moved very seamlessly onto Discord, allowing people to use those as the uh, the voice parts of their gaming. Well, I think a lot of people are using our dice bots. Some people are using it in conjunction with other systems like Roll20 or Astral, I think the other one is. Um, it's probably not going to go away. I think when we physically open, uh, we will probably still maintain the online part with Discord for those who are maybe might have to shield for a bit longer. And also for people who have met into branch. You know, we've got people down from Plymouth and Wales who are playing with people up in London, which they've never had the chance to do. And they're meeting up on Saturday nights gaming and they're using our Discord server for that, which is awesome. And we'd love that to continue even when all our branches are open. You know, um, our community is just going to get bigger because of the online side of it. Um, so we are looking at now, Gary particularly is looking at the guidelines and codes of conduct and putting in our moderators who will have a sort of similar role to committees who will safeguard everybody. Um, so uh, there will be a structure there. So watch this space really, because that's still ongoing. Uh, we're still learning, um, really, really still learning, but um, you know, it's, it's looking rosy. Awesome. Thank one of the big advantages of you know doing a, a new 
website, which we're trying to obviously build around at the moment with everything going on. Um, just to recap, one of the problems that we've had is is when uh, we obviously our website's full of plugins, like most websites, and um, a lot of these plugins stopped functioning when COVID hit. So the website's been slowly falling apart over this time. So now hopefully we can get this funds through, we can rebuild the site and a lot more catch is covered. We can look into having a much more modern look, bringing more of like an online branch uh, so people and, and offering a better facility for everybody. Uh, we're really in a good position now and we've had a lot of people step forward and offer help and advice and how we can do this. So this is... Um, much as this is a, it's a very hard time and very worrying time for us and the team of, of our future, at the same time, it's also very positive that we can be uh, great in this new future, a uh, very safe gaming environment for people. It's very exciting, I find, because uh, as you say, it's a, it's a difficult time, but it's also an opportunity. And uh, my my uh, small uh, impression of uh, the role play, even, even if you limit it in London, is that it had so many branches that it was very difficult to keep everybody <laughs> under the same roof uh, at the same time. So it's cool to to have this thing, which would be uh, this opportunity for people to play together, have more cross pollination, as they say in my industry, between uh, branches. Do you think? Uh, do you have an idea yet? Yet, or do games would take place? Would you have like? event weekends like uh, the gauntlet does that or would you have a special night because i remember uh with the branches in london one branch had the monday for them another the tuesday another the the wednesday will there be the the friday which is dedicated for online you know just to sort of uh have things happen in a you know, if more people show up at the same time, same moment to play, it, it gives more of a community feel. Are there are there things or projects you have considered about how you're gonna you're gonna run things? Yes, um, we're planning on once this is settled a bit further, and also once we know what's going on, um, opening up physically again in in real life at a real venue. We will be doing uh, member surveys. Uh, to pick a night that doesn't clash with any of our other club nights so that we could do an online um, online club for everybody. Um, it obviously will exclude any club nights that are already running because it's not fair to say we picked Fridays because then you've got Plymouth going, hang on, we meet then, what about us? So that's not fair on them. So we'll pick a night that nobody is running so that everyone gets a chance if they wish to. Also, um, I think that uh, Gary had a few more ideas on that, but um, at the moment, I think we're still, we're focusing on the main thing, which is getting our website up and running and looking all shiny. And also, um, you know, we're, we're constantly reading government guidelines on safety in real life, in real space, meeting up. So we're constantly looking at that and rejigging our plans for, for real life, because obviously this isn't something that we can set in place and in stone now, because it's constantly moving about what you need to do. So uh, we're, we're a bit taken up with that at the moment, I think. It's interesting because I remember trying to organize stuff like Le, Le, London Le Drinks and Dice, uh, uh, informal meetup of uh, role players to, to have a drink together. And uh, in London with venues, you get sort of this challenge that uh, starting Thursday evening, then Friday, then Saturday, venues are way too busy to accommodate crazy folks like us <laughs> top RPG fans which are we don't cons consume nearly enough uh, alcohol and costly beverage as others do so uh, I guess that's that's where the online can play a, a part for people who are not so much uh, into the nighttime economy but uh, this way you you have a, an option on a busy night yeah I mean, we, we, sorry go on, go on. no go on mate. so I mean we, we always really want to as Kat said we, we, we want to like look at our members and what our members are asking for and what the community is asking for um to to to, to build communities and I, I mean i'm probably letting out a little bit of a trade se secrets here but and it's but it's not really <laughs> too big a secret i hope um is that when we, whenever we start whenever we start a new community the first thing we do is ask people is ask people what do we, what do you need from what what do you need from a local a local role play community what do you what do you what do you need do do when when should it be um um 
and what what does that look like for you and i think we're, we're constantly asking that question um and we want to ask that question about about an on, on, online presence about offline presence about coming back we've been trying to talk to as many people as possible but do do we when do we feel it safe how what, what does it feel like what what will it look like to feel safe because we've always really kind of we've always wanted to focus on that that, that social well-being in our clubs as well as our emotional well-being and our physical well-being um and, and, and that's a really key thing because I, I know that during this time it's, that's been a real struggle that social well that social and emotional well-being has been a, a really big struggle for some people um and we having built now a community online we, we don't want to just let that fizzle out what we want to do is support is support, is support those people because as much as we're going we're going to be celebrating and jumping for joy when we get people back when we when we go back meeting meeting, meeting in person we're not going to forget about those people who, who may take more time to get back to, to get back into into the community because um for whatever reason for whatever reason well um, and again it's an opportunity because uh what i've noticed that online conventions uh is that there are quite a few people who didn't have the opportunity to have a, a branch of any club or even player around them who uh found out about online gaming thanks to that and even if they had a, a, a group or a club to play with they find out there they were m much more many more options to play different games with different people uh, I know, yeah, so if you're in an area which is sort of isolated, it's an opportunity for a lot of people to play. Uh, it's also an op much more comfortable for a lot of people who might have uh, mobility uh, challenges. Uh, so online gaming, I think, I think that this, I think that's something which will change. I, I don't like using absolute, but the tabletop RPG community forever. Uh, what happened with COVID? Uh, I think a, a lot of people, young and old, came together online, and uh, yeah, that's that's very exciting to think of roleplay and taking a part uh, in that. Yeah, no, really, it really, it really is, and you know, these with with online conventions. I mean, we're very proud to be a, be a part of the conventions uh, in different parts of the UK, and we're very we're very proud to do fundraising events when we can uh, and fundraise at those conventions. So I think I think the next trick is about fundraising on online conventions. So I don't know how we would do that. I don't know if I need to set up a webcam and dance in a in a dragon costume for four hours, or uh, how we could do it. But if you run an online convention and you're listening to this and you want some help fundraising please please, in dragon. Yeah. please, please give me please give me an e email hello at rphaven.co.uk <laughs> drop an email I'll, I'll come be a dancing dragon for, for ours anything, anything we can do to raise money for charity yeah sadly the technology is not quite there yet because obviously we would not have the smell of the dragon if we yeah, do it see, online right, yeah. right. <laughs> it's, it's, a green it's a green dragon for a reason I mean, for yeah, you, it, 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 you've it, noticed that. So after he he's been in that costume all day, sweating away, it, he yeah, we spray him down. It's it's horrible. So maybe doing it online is the way to forward. <laughs> the, you know, there's something in another opportunity there which I find quite fascinating. I've seen quite a lot of even before the pandemic, uh, very successful fundraising take place. Uh, online, uh, especially on uh, uh, platforms like Twitch, uh, for a lot of fundraising for for charities, and so, so there's sort of a couple of things come which it's an opportunity to have see come together. The first one is this fundraising, uh, see it maybe uh, yeah even more successful thanks to your experience and their the experience of of some streamers, and secondly. I remember attending MCM London Comic Con and there were a lot of Critical Role fans, for instance, who were a lot, many of them were consumers of streamers and many of them were playing online, but they were not so aware and used to attend physical conventions or go into physical clubs. So it's, uh, it's something which would be also very interesting to see how uh, the roleplay even could uh, engage with successful streamers out there and, and, and the audience of those streamers to even further bring the community together because we've been a bit somewhat segregated. I mean, not just streamers and physical thing. You're, you're already doing that with tabletop RPG fans, which is a segregated hobby, sort of. You know, we don't really know how they play in Manchester. 
Uh, my show is dedicated to sort of shining a light how people play in London for people abroad and sometimes visiting foreign countries and say, oh, well, in France, you, you go, they play over there like this. In Germany, uh, what, the Dark Eye is more popular than Dungeons and Dragons and so on. So it's... Uh, I like the, really like the idea of the role play heaven having. Uh, I, I know it already played this sort of role of bringing people together. So if it could extend to online, I think it would be very exciting. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. The um, and, that, and that's that's the thing you mentioned about people who maybe nice mug. I think you should hold that up to the camera there. <laughs> I've been holding it several times. <laughs> well, he's been drinking it, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think I think that's one of the one of our key reasons why we're why we're we're fundraising is as you said we want to we've always wanted to bring people together, and we find we find that our branches have always been key places for that. There's always been a, our our motto has always been a a big friendly welcome and a big smile uh, when people come through the door, especially new players, um, and. We want we want to continue that because we think it's, it's. I hope people agree with us that we think it's really really important that we that we welcome people into our hobby and we have a place to do that and um and we have a place that's safe to do that uh, and so that's one one of those things and then we what we find is you 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 create an atmosphere which is warm happy you know jokes and laughs and then those and you pay that two pounds fifty and then over the course of a year you you raise a thousand pounds for charity without even thinking about it. And I mean, the, the RP Haven has has invested, not invested, sorry, has has used or has donated about seventeen thousand pounds over the over the course of its ten years lifespan into communities, into into mental health charities, homeless charities, you know, into everything. And we 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 want to keep that mission that mission really really going. I think um, it's also uh, sorry, I jumped jumped in there, oh, but please. the the role play haven is is not just really a role playing club. It's it's it does a lot lot more. It's about a community as well. It's about a lot of these people going to the clubs who've never, um, they don't have many friends or they don't get out because of various different reasons. And it's about seeing a friendly face, meeting up with friends. Uh, a lot of them go for drinks after the after the um, after the, the games. Um, we've helped out an awful lot of them as well with even job references, trying to help them find work. It's it really it really is a giant family uh, that we are here. Um, you know, you look at some of the, some of the publishers as well, uh, like Modifius. Half of them are behaving members <laughs> because we've helped them out and get them some jobs and all that. Because some of them are really, really talented writers or artists, um, and so it's good to to give them a little bit of confidence, give them a little push, so they can go a little bit further in life. Um, and even when we we were on Sky TV um, many many years ago. Uh, we had Ashley Banjo teaching a load of uh, load of us how to dance, um, and more like humiliation, to be honest. And he, one of the things he noticed was is that there was this big confidence that we were driving into people, um, and really it was kind of that sort of moment right there that you realise this is not just a role playing club that we got here. We're doing a lot, lot more. We're really, really helping a lot of people um and like dave cat me tell you a hundred stories of the, the impact that we've had doing the role play haven um you know even when we're a small club and now we're like you know we're eight nine hundred members seven branches where <laughs> the impact is must be even bigger and, and that's not even just the charity side that's the community side um so yeah it's it's not just about chuck and dice it that chuck and dice is the bonus it's about the members. Yeah, we um, in, we while well, speaking to members and a couple of them were have have told me several things that they they, they, they were very eager eager for us to share and and and, and say and I've had one member in particular want, want wanted to let to let people know that he there's a couple of times where he where he felt that if he wasn't at the role play haven he he doesn't he didn't know where he was going to be that night, um and he was very glad for a place that allowed him to engage in a, in a hobby that is it, there's escapism in that and that help and that helps but also it's social contact and it's relaxing and it's and it's welcoming and that's that's really why why we do it, why, why we do it and that's really why we want to we want we want to keep doing it because 
Um, everybody needs needs that space, and there's plenty of football clubs, and there's plenty of there's plenty of rugby clubs, but there's not a lot of role play clubs. And I tell you, if I get on my on my pedestal, there should be more role play clubs. There are a few. There are a few. I can name a there's, few in London. Yeah, there's amazing ones in London, and and there's amazing ones up and down the UK that have been that we that we work with, and we love working with other role play clubs as well. And we just want to keep that going. We just want to keep that going. More role play clubs. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to comment on what Gary was saying, uh, mentioning humiliation. Uh, I don't think you know what humiliation is until you start doing TikTok videos for your Go GoFundMe, Gary. But hopefully it will I'm, happen I'm going to take you up on that challenge. Um, <laughs> um, maybe I'll show you the video of me dancing and uh, some of the other people. And you, yeah, you're going to go, nah. I'm shameless on TikTok. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. I love your TikTok. It Thank you. Me smile. Yeah. Uh, I really, I, after, after I saw your TikTok, because thankfully you posted it on Facebook, um, is I, I downloaded it and then I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> so <laughs> I really enjoy it. So before we reach the the death of going uh, to TikTok, uh, you got a, a few... My son is running towards here. <laughs> uh, I was about to go BBC World style with him running behind me, but my, <laughs> my wife caught him uh, off screen. <laughs> So I believe you got a few things uh, scheduled, but uh, we're recording this to for people uh, to be uh, uh, transparent. We're recording this on October seventh. We're gonna release this on October thirtieth when the GoFundMe uh, launches. But I believe you got uh, a few things which are uh, on the program that you are a few online activities, uh, maybe some streams. So w what's ahead as part of the promotion of this GoFundMe? Are there things you can already uh, mention if maybe the details uh, will might have changed in the meantime. We will put links in the description of the episode if people want to to find stuff, and we will put updates as much uh, as we can. But uh, at this stage today, uh, yeah, get us excited about what's going to happen. So uh, we have teamed up with um, a load of streamers um, currently as planned. It's, hopefully, it doesn't change because, like you said, it's the seventh October now. It's quite a few weeks away, but um, touch wood, everything goes fine. We uh, we teamed up with four or five streamers. Uh, I'm not going to say names at this moment. If it happens, that'd be great. Uh, there's rumours of some very, very big publishers who are going to be involved, who are going to be supporting us and pushing us. Again, I'm not going to say names at this moment. Hopefully, you're watching this video on the 30th. You're going to see a big string of names all the way around here of people supporting. I don't do FX, so people would have to go see Can I not old lousy text in the bing, description. Bing, 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 so, um, no, okay. Okay, so if you. Can, if can we you name at least enough, someone in house? Because I know someone, I uh, think they are quite re reliable, so. Maybe you can uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to have to wait. We're, I'm not going to say any names yet and push people because it's still been organised at the moment. There's there's still a lot to be done. Um, because if I say the name and they can't do it, they're going to feel horrible. So I don't want to put pressure on anyone at the moment because okay, we... all, all of these people are volunteering to help do a, a, a big charity stream to support us. There is a, currently seven streamers the plan is on Halloween, the next day after funding, uh, that we start the funding campaign. Halloween is on, I'm looking at my calendar, 31st. So on 31st, they are going to be doing a gaming day uh, where they're going to be free games running for the day, nonstop, uh, across seven to eight different Twitch channels. Uh, but if you follow us on, the, on this page and the GoFundMe page, uh, on our Facebook page or our website, you know, all the details will be published then. Okay, so please, people, go check the description to so we find out if Matthew Mercer kept his word and he will be participating <laughs> this or not. Hopefully, <laughs> he will. He will. He's a nice guy, so we hope so. But uh, we we won't name Manganiello and you know all the celebrities like Asa Butterfield, who's a big D and D nerd. Uh, let's yeah, wait. Vin, Vin, Vin Diesel is going to... Oh, no, dude, dude, you weren't meant to say his you name. Jinxing it. People. Damn, you're jinxing man. it. Oh. Ooh, I'm trying, man. He'll, he'll not, he won't go through now. <laughs> He's going to be super shy. He's going to be... We've seen shy, in that yeah. video, he was in yeah. his chair and all shy. Uh, it's a pity. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Oh, uh, what's left to talk about? Uh, we still got a, a a bit of time. I'm running well, out of questions. First of all, we have to say thank you to you, uh, Jeremy. We have to say thank you, Matt. Uh, we re we you. really, really appreciate it. I mean, you promised me so many iTunes review that I could not refuse. <laughs> Plus, you sent me this mug, so I'm yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, pro pro that's product placement. That's product placement right there. Uh, and we have to say, it's a sincere, sincere, sincere thank you. You've always been one of our, our big supporters and always been champion us. And we, we, can't, we can't do half the things without, without you. Um, I mean, for, for people not aware, they wouldn't... They probably wouldn't be the released without the role play event in large extent. First of all, uh, your invitation, Gary, and and, and the role play event to uh, la guilde des releases francophones de Londres to join the role play event to offer to have some game masters run games at at Loncon. Uh, so the what is it called? The full name the Worldcon World yes, Science Worldcon, Fiction Convention. But yeah. Yes, but it's long con, yeah. So that you reached out uh, an invitation to that. That was the very first time I ever ran a game in a convention setting. Uh, and I had an amazing time running Star Trek, uh, Last Unicorn Games there. Uh, then, yeah, things sort of participated of me launching the project of the release. And very early, you were super supportive. And you were the first people I interviewed who were not from La Guilde, uh, who I interviewed, except two tourists from Utah, who I uh, interviewed in a street in Barcelona. It was a bit weird, but you were the <laughs> first proper tabletop RPG organization uh, I interviewed, and you you helped me get in touch with a lot of people in the industry. So like many, many, many people, I think, uh, hot here in the UK and uh, probably in other countries, uh, uh, you've been the role play event's been very helpful, uh, very generous with us. And uh, as you were saying, it's time for us to show uh, a little bit of generosity, so you can continue to be generous uh, towards even more people. That's kind of what we're here to do. We're here to help, and um, we want to help as many people as we can. We want to roll dice and help people. That's what we're here for. And speaking for someone who, you know, professionally works in the industry. That's what the industry is like. That's what we're all like in the industry. We're all trying to help each other. Uh, there's not the greatest deal of money in RPG industry. Yeah, there's been a few who's made a little bit of money. Uh, but generally, we do this for love. That's what we're doing it for. And we're doing the role play haven for love as well and to try and help people. And if we can help you, Jeremy, we will. We would help everyone we can. Um, including ourselves, you know, this, 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 this is, uh, I'm a junkie for this, <laughs> for role playing, helping people and all this, you know, Kat is, Dave is, you know, this is, we, we do this because we love doing it. Uh, and we're, we're at that point at the moment where we, we want to continue. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. Dave's doing it for a number of years and so has Kat. And it's, we're at that point now we, we really, really need people's help. And I don't think I've really ever asked anyone for help for anything. So, you know, I'm just asking everybody now, please do share this, talk about this. Um, and please, can you help support us? Because this is, uh, this is a really difficult time uh, for everybody. But we need to uh, lose my words now. <laughs> This is coming quite a lot for me. So yeah, we just we just really need the help now to uh, keep the RP Haven going. It's my baby, it's Dave's, Cat's and everyone else's. And uh, we, we really want to continue doing what we're doing. Uh, RP, the RP Haven is based on people and volunteers and there's people that make it, make it up. And um, we all, vol everyone volunteers our time. We volunteer our time. We all have full-time jobs. And then this is like another full-time job, which is absolutely great, but, but um now we're now we're going to we're going to need to rely on the people who make us up to help help support it to continue, and also people like yourself, Jeremy. So thank you, like, thank you again, um, for for having us chat some nonsense for a little while. So that's been good. Um, but yeah, we, we, we really appreciate everyone who's already, who's already, uh, by this point has already done a lot, and for everyone who 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 will donate, every small bit helps. And that, and that's a classic line from every every fundraiser but it, lit it literally does every, every small bit really really helps well i cannot wait to for us to, to celebrate the success of the gofundme at uh, 
Dragon Me 2021, we will be hugging again, although we'll all be wearing those inflatable hazmat suits. Uh, it will be a bit awkward, but minus the smell, so that's uh, <laughs> an added value. Uh, where can people find me? What can people check out besides the, the link I will include in the description? Uh, so for people who hear that and for some reason can uh, kind of check where, what's your website, your Twitter handle, and uh, all this sort of stuff. Well, there's a list. So if you want to find us on the website, it's rphaven.co.uk. Facebook, it's forward slash rphaven. Twitter, it's rphaven. You just go to Google and you can literally ask Google rphaven and Google will tell you. So we're, we're pretty easy to find on the internet. And of course, we call it rphaven, but the full name's the Roleplay Haven. And uh, we usually come up uh, everywhere when you type that in. It's easy. Uh, it's not like the role list, which is difficult to spell, or <laughs> it's not like Phoenix Games Club, which you end up in a club in Phoenix in the US, of course, when you're Googling it. So it is quite easy. Or London RPG Community, which is too generic, I think. The role play heaven, that's easy to find. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. That's, 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 that's the plan. And we'll hopefully be easy, easy to find on the streets when we're back out there. I think you will be unavoidable online. Everybody will be aware of that. And, uh, Tired of seeing you all, but uh, happy about what is going on. All right. Well, this is goodbye. Uh, what's your goodbye, uh, each of you? Stay Cat. safe. <laughs> stay safe, yeah. Cat? Uh, stay safe, stay positive, and keep rolling those dice. Uh, thank you very much, for everyone, who's put so much effort into the roleplay haven all already. And thank you for everyone who, who's, about, who's about to and uh, keep yourselves safe out there thanks everyone uh everyone looking at this uh, please uh leave a like to the video share it and go check the other videos of the roleplay heaven and the links to the gofundme and try to share it far and wide everywhere to, the, to anyone you can anywhere you can all the social media the reddit the whatsapp the tiktok Go there and spread the word about this GoFundMe because it's very, very important and dear for the people here in the UK. If you're abroad, uh, your support would be much, much welcome. And it's a, it could be a great opportunity for to engage uh, across borders, I'm sure, uh, online. Because when you play online, you, you could play games with us uh, and uh, that would be amazing. So that's it. That was Kalum for the Café Rollis. Thank you very much for watching this. And uh, see you on the Rope Heaven GoFundMe. Cheers, bye. Bye.